And again, the center for both of these is going to be at the origin. We'll change the center in a few weeks. Well, maybe next class, but we'll only meet once a week. So if I'm here next week, we'll change the center. If I'm not here next week, we'll do it the week after. I don't know if I forgot to look to see if I'm recording or not now. Yes. Good. Now, Lipson looks like a circle that somebody sat on it, squished a little bit there. So it's either going to be an egg, shape of an egg. It will look something like this. Or it's going to look something like this. That's the ellipse. If you actually want to graph an ellipse, what you take, which is I've done that on the big board, but you take a string. That's a long string here. I don't even want that long. So, <coughs> But if you take a string like this, and you tie a knot in it, I'll show you. Now, if you take this, I wish I got a knife to cut the extra, and you hold this down, and you attach this to your graph, you have a circle, right? But if you take two points on that, tape them, so it doesn't move. You take this point. So there's a focal point. There's another one here. Two of them. And now you go like this with it. Trace it. See the graph? It's not a circle, actually. Flip it over if you can reach. Come on. Uh, and you'll have your ellipse there. So it depends how far these points. If you go farther, it's skinnier. If I make it go farther, it will be skinnier now. See? So how far the focal points from each other that will determine how tight that graph there. You can make go up and down. So that's how we make an ellipse. You need two focal points, not one. I don't need this shit. So when you see me graph these, I'm going to be labeling two focal points on that. The distance from the center to each one will be the same. So the distance from here to there and here to here is the same. So first focal, second one. The same thing here. This will be the focal point. This will be another one here. It has to be inside that. This is known as the vertex. So F for focal. Focal point. V is the vertex. So the vertex is right here, which is the longer, that's the vertex, and that's another one. This is a vertex, this is another one. How can I fit all the information on it? The distance from here to here is always known as A. The longer side is always A. The shorter side is always B, so this is B. So the coordinates for this point, if you look at that, that'll be B comma zero. This is negative B comma zero. The longer side is A. So A is the distance from here all the way to here. So this is zero comma A. This is zero comma negative A. 
when you're looking at this picture, which side is the longer? This one or this one? Up and down or horizontal? So this is A. The longer side is always A. So the vertex here, A comma zero. The vertex here is what? Negative A comma zero. The shorter side is always B. Always. So this will be what? Zero comma B. And this will be zero comma negative B. The distance to the focal point, that distance from the origin to the focal point is known as C. I just had lots of stuff to write on this. The distance from the origin to the focal point is C. Now, two more terms, major axes. That's the longer side. Major axes always from this end to that end. From this end to that end. That has to be twice A. And the minor axis, if you hear that, is the shorter side from here to there. From here to there, that's 2B. I'm running out of space to put on that. Which side is the longer side for this one? Is it the x-axis or the y-axis? The equation for that will always be, because the longer side is x, it's x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared is equal to 1. x is the longer side, y is the shorter side. This one, which side is the longer one, x or y? So that would be y squared over a squared plus x squared over b squared is equal to 1. That's the form for it, the standard form. Notice, isn't C less than A? C is the distance from here to the focal point, where A from here to there. So C is less than A, so you're always going to find out. This is really not Pythagorean's theorem, but it's going to say C squared equals A squared minus B squared. Minus, not a plus. For both of these. How far the focal point? This tells us where the focal point should be. C squared equals A squared minus B squared. What is that equation called? What is that equation for? To find where the center of the focal point. So to graph this, you have to know where the focal, you have to identify where the focal point, you got to tell me where the vertex is, you got to tell me how long this side, how far they go, how long these, and graph it. So an example. Yep. So only thing we're doing different here is instead of x sitting on top of a here, y is sitting on top of a. a is the longer side. b is the shorter side here in the y direction. So here x is the shorter side. y is the longer side. a is always the longer side. b is always the shorter side. So here's an example.
Graph the ellipse. And my ellipse is x squared over 25 plus y squared over 9 equals to 1. I want to graph that. Now notice the 25 is bigger than 9. You see that? So this is the longer side, the a squared, that's the b squared. Since x is sitting on top of the bigger number, it better be this format, this picture. So when you compare it to the standard form, which is That's the standard form for it. So let's take a look. A squared will have to be what? 25. That means A will have to be plus or minus 5. B squared has to be what? 9. B will have to be plus or minus 3. I'm going to graph that. I know it's along the x-axis, not the y-axis. How would I know that? Because the 25 is the bigger number. What's in top 25? x. So my vertex. One of them is, remember, A is 5. It's going to be 5 units to the right, and the other one 5 units to the left. God, I hate the scale on this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There we go. If I do 5 units to the right, that's right here. That's the first one. That's 5, comma 0. And the other one 5 units to the left which is right here. The Y is going, how high is it? Three units up, three units down. And three units down. So this is zero comma three, this is zero comma negative three. And when you graph that, it should look like this. That's what the graph should look like, the close I can get to an ellipse. It's supposed to be nice and smooth, it doesn't look that smooth. Now I have a focal point. Somewhere here there's a focal point. I need to know where. There's two of them. So to calculate C, C equals what? Or C squared equals A squared plus or minus, not a plus. This is not Pythagorean's theorem. minus b squared. So c squared equals what? 25 minus 9. c squared equals 16. c equals plus or minus 4. So this is 4 comma 0. Negative 4 comma 0. So if I wanted to graph this, if I was really wanted to graph this one. How long my string will have to be? What do you think? At least five inches. How about Six. 10? Actually, more than 10, 20. Oh, yeah. Because you have to have a loop in it, right? Right. So you're going to go, like, if you pull it straight out when you're at the end here, it should be end to end. So when I pull it tight here, it should reach that corner and this corner. When it's flat, like this. 
So that's 10 units from here to there and 10 back, that's 20. So if I cut that here, if I can attach them and cut it right there, then I need to put one tape at four units to the right, one at four units to the left and graph that picture. That's how you get that. So how long my major axis? My major axis here is what? 10. Twice A. How about your minor axes? Twice B. From that end to this end. That's your minor axis. Major from here to there. That's one vertex here. That's another one. Let me try another one. We're almost done. I know you're tired. have been here for two or three hours. So what do we have? We have x squared over 4 plus y squared over 16 equals to 1. Which number is bigger, the 4 or the 16? 16. So the 16 is your a squared. And the 4 is your what? b squared. a squared equals 16. a equals plus or minus 4. b squared equals the 4. b equals plus or minus what? 2. Is this up and down or left and right? Yes, up and down because the bigger number on top of y. Let's go up four units. Four up and four down. Thing here and here, I think. That's four, one, two, three, four, yep. So that's one here. That's your vertex. That's zero comma four. The other vertex here, zero comma negative four. Two and two on the other end. Here and here. 2 comma 0, negative 2 comma 0. Again, the graph is going to look like this. That's what the graph is going to look like. Where's my focal point? C squared equals what? A squared minus b squared. 16 minus 4, which is what? 12. So c equals the square root 12. If you want to simplify that, they probably will not use decimal. 12 can be broken down to what? 4 and 3? What's the square root of 4? 2 to the square root of 3. They probably give it to you like this. I know our book doesn't like to use decimal. So if they ask you where's the focal point, one of them is right here. And what's x equal to? Zero. And what is y equal to? Two to the square root of three. There's another focal point right here which is what? Zero and negative what? Two square, two square root of three. What is the major axis? 
How long? Try again. Eight. Twice A. Eight. I wrote eighteen. Eight. I'm tired too. What's the minor axis? Twice B. Which is four. The only thing I can see him do, and I'll give you one. And see if you can figure it out. Sometimes they play backward with they give you information about it. And they say, give me the equation and graph it. Like what? There we go. They must be an example. You know what? We're going to give you the minor axis equals 8. And the focus, well, actually, they'll give me the vertex here. The vertex at 0, comma, negative 5. We should be able to figure everything about it. We should be able to get the equation. We should be able to graph it just from these two things. Now, what are they telling us? Where is the vertex? On the y-axis. Somewhere here. So the graph has to look like this, then. If this distance is 0, negative 5, what's that distance on the top? 0, 5. You know what A is. Yep. So A equals to 5, which means A squared equals 25. You know what B equal to? It's half of that number. B squared equals what? 16. Since it's sitting up and down, the longer side is on top of what? X or Y axis. So it better be Y squared over what? a squared plus x squared over b squared equals to 1. Do I know what a is or a squared? Yep. So that's the equation of the ellipse. You want to find the focal, where the focal point is? C squared equals what? A squared. a squared minus B squared. Is that a 9? So you have two focal points. One here, 0, comma 3. And one here, 0, comma negative 3. What else do you want to know about this one? The major axes? 10. Anything else we might need? So by giving you the information backwards, sometimes you can go through them and figure what you need. What did I get this one from? I was just grabbing it. I saw another one, I'll make it the last one. Another example. And this one says, the vertex at 0, 13 
the focus at zero negative 12. Where's the vertex? Right there. You know what A is. What's A? Thir nope, just 13. A is 13. A is the distance from the center to the vertex, always. That means A squared is what, 169? I don't know what B is. I know the focal point right here. Zero comma negative 12. Well, well, one is 12, one is negative 12, right? Mm -hmm. That's a negative here and that's a plus 12. Let me clean it. messy there. What is that going to give me? What? Give you a of C yep, we know what C is. C is 12 units. It's the distance from here to the focal point. So what is C squared? 144 now Pythagorean, not Pythagorean's theorem, c squared equals a squared minus b squared. 144 equals 169 minus b squared. Bring this one to this side. Negative b squared equals what? Negative 25. b squared equals 25. I'm done. That means what's B? Five. Five units. What's the equation for that? Since the longer side is Y, Y squared over what? 169 plus X squared over what? 25 is equal to one. Notice by giving you two pieces, we managed to work the problem backward, get everything we need to find about it. That's enough torture for today. We only have two more topics for next class. The circle is good, we don't have to touch it, but the parabola and the ellipse, notice the center is always at the origin. Next class, we're going to move that. It's not going to be the origin. We'll show you how to fix that. We also need to add one more topic, and that's the hyperbola. So there we have two more sections left. We'll finish them.